All right. Y'all doing good? We are in week three tonight of a sermon series we entitled Rituals. There are some rituals. There are some things we do. I need everybody's attention. There are some things we do as Christians that sometimes I got some questions, man. I'm not going to lie. Smooth pastor, and I'm like, but why, though? Look at your neighbor and say, but why, though? Have you ever asked somebody that? Like, but, 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 but why, though, right? So uh, the first week we talked about fasting, which was awesome because it was right around the time we came back after the break, and it just so happened that as a church, we were in our fast, right? And so that was just perfect timing on that. Many of you said that you're fasting. Listen, I'm so proud of y'all. If you're not fasting, that's okay, too. And don't feel like you got to do it for 21 days. You can start today if you wanted to. Last week, we talked about prayer. Come on. God is not a genie. Amen? We had some fun with that. This week, anybody know what we're talking about this week? Anybody want to guess? Ryan, what you think? Oh, my man. Did I tell you that? Did I? Did I say it? We are going to talk about communion tonight. All right? Show of hands. Everybody look up here. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. How many of you have heard of communion before? Raise your hand. Communion. Okay, put your hands down. How many of you have ever partook or taken communion? Raise your hand. Okay. All right. We're going to ask those questions at the end of service, and we're going to see what kind of a... Uh, you know, response we get from that. So we're going to be talking about communion tonight, also referred to as Holy Communion. Maybe you've heard it called that, but there's another word, Eucharist. Uh, some religions call it as well. But why do we take communion? This is what we're going to talk about here today, all right? In order to answer this question, though, we got to go all the way back. Look at your neighbor and say, we got to take it back. Not like a return, not like going to a store and returning something, but we're going to go, we're going, we're going to go back, Okay. Uh, let's go back to where it all started and then we're going to work our way forward. We're going to be in the book of Genesis chapter 3 today. Very familiar passage of scripture. We have read it at least a dozen times in the last year. And I guarantee you we'll read it a dozen more. Okay? Sometimes you got to figure out, you got to go right back to the source. All right? So we're going to be in Genesis chapter 3. Let's start at verse 6. Open up your Bibles if you're there on your phone or it'll be on the screen. Shout out to everybody watching online. Let's go! The Bible says, when the woman, in other words, Eve, uh-oh, saw that the fruit of the tree was good, okay, I've heard this story before, and pleasing for the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, the Bible says that she took it and she ate it. <clears throat> and she also gave some to her husband, Adam, who was with her, and he ate it. Then their eyes were opened, and they realized that they were Naked, okay? And where we're going to kind of uh, uh, hover in is just this last portion of that same verse that says this. So they sewed fig leaves together, and they made coverings. Everybody look up here. They made, amen, for themselves. We, we're old enough. Let's just be real. Adam and Eve, okay, they, when they were created, they did not have any clothing on, Okay? But when they ate of this fruit, they realized, whoop, whoop, okay? Uh, if you were ever in a crowded spot in, in, in like, a, like a mall or something like that, and you don't have a clothes, you, you, whoop, whoop, you want to cover that up, okay? But the Bible says that when they realized that they were naked, they sewed fig leaves together themselves and covered themselves. I need you to sink this into your mind. They did it themselves. How many of you have ever gotten yourself out of trouble? Use a lie, don't even raise your hand, because no, you didn't. Your efforts cannot get you out of trouble. You probably lied to get yourself out of trouble. You probably threw somebody else under the bus, but you did not get yourself out of trouble. But Adam and Eve thought they could, and that's what we're going to talk about here today. Is that okay? Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for this day. Bless this word. Holy Spirit, preach this with me. Woo! In Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. amen. Can you shout Amen. Can you say amen in a deep voice? Amen. amen. Okay. I want to talk to you all today. Lesson topic, show and tell. Show and tell. I remember when I was a kid, 
at school, we had show and tell. Okay? How many of you guys remember show and tell as a kid? Okay. What kind of things do people bring to show and tell? Just shout them out. Medals? Trophies? Trains? What was it? A pen? Okay. A pet. Oh, a pet. Oh, a live pet? Dang, that'd be kind of dope. Like a snake? Oh, no. Uh, if you want to know something about me, I do not like snakes. So if you ever need some truth out of me, just bring a snake in the room. I'll tell you anything you need to know. I take that thing out. What else do people bring? What? Dolls? Dolls? Okay. People bring books. People bring rocks. People bring trophies, all kinds of stuff. Scorpions? Okay. That'd be a wild show and tell. All right, listen up. Shh. So in elementary school, everybody would bring something to school, okay? And they would gather around, kind of like you guys are doing right now, and they would show it to the class, and they would tell, right? They would talk just like you're talking right now as I'm talking. Oh. So I remember when I was in third grade, I went to Rolling Ridge Elementary School in Olathe. I was a Rolling Ridge Rocket. I don't know if anybody Rolling Ridge. Rolling Ridge, okay. I remember third grade. Uh, I still even remember my teacher's name, Mrs. Henry. She was the greatest teacher in the world. But we had show and tell. Does anybody want to guess what I brought for show and tell? Superman. Superman, that would be a really good, really good guess, but it wasn't. I haven't even told my baby girl this story. I brought an egg. Why y'all laughing? Why that funny? I'm, I'm like asking, but why though? <laughs> I brought an egg. I still to this day have no idea why I brought a bag. I really don't. I'm not talking about a hard boiled egg, y'all. I carried that mug in, okay? So I remember we had show and tell and I showed my egg and I, and I think I maybe drew something on it, like a smiley face or something like that. But the problem with this story, before we move on, is I put the egg in my desk and it got pushed to the back. And the egg was there for a minute. Y'all remember them desks? Did y'all did have those in elementary school where it's just like the cubby, you know, and, and, and the, pen, the pens and pencils in this little thing, and then, but, but, and then they'd have you clean the desk, but we, we just hadn't cleaned the desk in a minute. Well, what happened was uh, about, I don't know how long, it, it was a long time, y'all, like weeks. We uh, did something where we got new books or something like that, and, I, and I, I pushed the book back in there, and all I heard was So I was like, oh, what's that sound? So I pull, I remember pulling like my, oh, oh, uh, my adults will know about these. Do y'all remember the no fear folders? Do y'all know what I'm talking about? T, you know what I'm talking about? It was no fear, and they had like the eagle claw on the football or something like that. Any of my adults? Anybody? Just by myself? Okay, Miss Heather. All right, I, I was pulling my, my, my folders out and I just, the, the you know, the egg. Um, do y'all know what an egg smells like after weeks? I can still to this day, I, I'm, I've seek counseling for this. I can still smell it, like it's bad. Uh, so what we had to do, I'm, no lie. They had to take the desk out. We actually had to evacuate the room for a little bit and clear it out. It was bad, y'all. Okay, so what did you learn from this when you go home and tell your parents don't take an egg to show and tell, amen? amen. All right, but communion, communion is a lot like show and tell. This is a time that you and I as believers, people who believe in Jesus Christ have professed our faith, okay, in Jesus Christ, we come to the table showing and telling what Christ has done for them. Let me work this thing out. But in order to show and tell, you need to truly know what Christ has done for you, okay? So let's go back to our biblical story. We are in Genesis chapter three. I wanna jump down to the 21st verse. So we started at six, now we're at 21. Remember, they made their own coverings, right? Out of leaves, fig leaves, right? They sewed them together, put them on, bathing suits, good to go. But the Bible says in verse 21, the Lord made garments of skin, for Adam and his wife and clothed them. So they're no longer wearing the fig leaves, but they are wearing garments of what? 
Garments of what? God made garments of skin. So to have skin, an animal would have had to been sacrificed. This is usually the part of the story of the movie where you'd see a disclaimer that says no animals were harmed during the story. Unfortunately, that's not this case. In order to have skin, you would have to have a living creature. So God provided a covering for them, an atonement for their sins, but here's the thing, it wasn't permanent. Okay? The world needed a sacrifice that would cover their sins, okay? Wipe them out. The world needed a spotless lamb, one without defect and one without sin. And Jesus is often referred to as the lamb of God. Why? Because Jesus is that spotless lamb. Now, Jesus' blood cleanses you and me, all of us. Because after Adam and Eve came, God continued to require a blood sacrifice to cover sin. You can go back through all of Old Testament and you're eventually gonna run into a time when they literally had to slaughter an animal, cut its neck, okay, I'm sorry, just, just stay with me, it's in the Bible, and they literally had to spill the blood. But here's the thing, every time they did that, it was a temporary solution. How many of y'all like putting Band-Aids on your body? I'm stuck on Band-Aid brand because Band-Aid stick on me. Anybody heard that commercial before? That's back in my day. Y'all wouldn't know nothing about that. I, I will put a Band-Aid. If there is a cut, Band-Aid. How many of y'all are like Rambo, though, and you like, man, that's, I'm bleeding, but I'm cool. I'm good. Just put some glue on it. Y'all, some of y'all? Hey, super glue on a cut? Oh. Push it together. Tape? Okay. All right. But the point is, listen up, it was always a temporary solution. In the book of Genesis, when they sewed fig leaves, it covered their nakedness. Listen up. It was a temporary cover for their sins, but it was not a solution. Are you guys staying with me? Jesus was God's permanent answer. Let me, let me, let me just say that again for the people in the back. Jesus, look at your neighbor, say, Jesus Jesus was God's permanent answer to all of life's problems. Jesus took upon himself all sin, past, present, and in the future. What you did yesterday, what you're gonna do tomorrow, and even what you did today. Jesus went to the cross, paid the full penalty for that thing, and here we are. If you believe that, will you say amen? Amen. Okay. Look at your neighbor and say, but what that got to do with communion, though? Well, thank you for asking. So now that we've established that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, that Jesus died for our sins, can we roll right into communion? Is that okay? Yeah. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, you can, you can read this story in the Bible, okay? He had his final meal with his disciples, and this is what we call the Lord's Supper. Have you guys ever heard that term before? It's often called the Last Supper, how, do y'all call it supper or dinner? Anybody call it supper? Okay, that's fair. That's all right. Some people at their house, it's supper. I, I don't know the day. Hey, hey, all I know is food is at the table. You understand? Amen. Man. Um, let's look at this uh, graphic real quick. This is the Last Supper. Tanner, you got that? How many of you guys have seen this photo before? Does anybody know who painted that? Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci. Do you know what year? I'm hearing 15s, okay? It was actually painted in 1496, and I smooth didn't know that, I had to Google it. This photo right here is over 500 years old. This was painted by an amazing painter, and what I love about this is what I found in my studies, this is like a 15-foot painting. This ain't just a little itty-bitty painting, okay? And it's not even on display anywhere from what I read. They have it in Italy or Rome or somewhere like that, and it's in an archive. It's super faded now. It's 500 years, y'all. Come on, right? But this is a painting you guys have seen before. A lot of people have mimicked it and added things. But what I want you guys to know about this is this is Jesus' final moments with his disciples. This would be the final meal he would have before going to be stripped, beaten, and hung on the cross. 
this. And during this final night with his disciples, Jesus led his disciples in communion. Whoo! Some people are like, why we do communion? Jesus did it. So let's talk about it. Matthew chapter 26. I love how now you've seen the image. Let me show, let me paint the picture for you. <laughs> Pun intended. Let's go. Anybody? No? Okay. Thank you. My man, Jaden always looks out for me. I appreciate that. I want sincere laughs. I want petty laughs. Matthew chapter 26, starting at the 26th verse, says this. While they were eating, anybody hungry? Yeah. Like when I said that, I felt my, my tummy grumble. Okay. Hey, we got y'all tonight. Don't worry about it. We're going to hook y'all up. We got you. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, say with me, and when he had given thanks, the Bible says that he broke it. Everybody go, Ch And he gave it to his disciples saying this, take and eat, this is my body. Verse 27, then he took a cup, okay, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink. All of you, not just some of you, all of you. Wow, the Holy Spirit just put something on my heart. I didn't even put it in my notes, but I'm gonna give it to you later. This is my blood of the covenant, we'll talk about that later, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whew, that's so good. So now that we've heard what communion kind of looks like, let's break it down here. Who can partake in communion? I'll, I'm a church kid, y'all. I was born and raised in church. I had to go to church every Sunday. Uh, we didn't have COVID back then, but had we had COVID, we would have been in church. Nothing gonna stop that. But I went to a church who would only allow you to take communion if you've been baptized. Okay? This is what I was born and raised believing. So when I came to this church about 18 or so years ago, what is, did somebody just say, dang? What was that? <laughs> Kiki, what, what, why? You know what, come up here and, and get in the mic and tell me why you, why you, no? I'm just kidding. Hey, I'm turning 40 this year, y'all, let's go! <laughs> Woo! I'm the youngest youth pastor in the world. That's a lie. But when I came to the church, they, they, they handed out communion, and I mean, I, I, I saw like kids, you know, partaking in communion, I was like, ooh, they doing it wrong. Oh, oh, yep, see, yep, you doing it wrong. And I wondered why people feel this way. Who can partake in communion? Let's talk about it. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at the 26th verse. It says this, for whenever, look at your neighbor say, whenever. I know y'all not used to that word, you're used to the whatever, right? But for whenever, if somebody were meeting up with you, and you're like, hey, what time do you want to go to lunch? And you say, whenever, does that sound like a specific time to you? No. Does it sound like whenever, right? So for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, he's talking about you, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, okay? In other words, what this scripture is saying is you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes means you announce this thing publicly, in other words, when you take communion, you're preaching. Oh, yeah, some of y'all uh, have a call of God on your life to preach, but some of y'all are like, I don't think I could preach. Oh, no, you've preached before. Because <laughs> you're proclaiming Jesus Christ with your actions. You are proclaiming this. Satan, go to hell. That's right, I said it. Oh, yeah. Because that's where Satan's going to be as soon as Jesus comes back and puts that <laughs> finishing move on this. Uh, uh. Okay? You are proclaiming, Satan, you no longer have a hold on me. Okay? You are proclaiming victory in Jesus' name. Whenever you take communion, you are proclaiming and preaching Jesus Christ. Whether you want to or not, you are a preacher. Look at your neighbor and say, I didn't know you could preach. So, so, so let's, let, we've talked about who can take communion. That's everybody. That's you. That's me. Okay, 
But we need to be clear here. Let's jump down to verse 27. Throw that back up there. Verse 27 says this. Everybody can, everybody can take communion, but look at your neighbor and say, but wait, there's more. So then whoever, notice how it doesn't say uh, Christians, doesn't say pastors, doesn't say 180 students. It says whoever eats of the bread and drinks of the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, look at your neighbor and say, uh-oh. Okay, let's talk about this. Whoever takes this in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body. Oh, and blood of the Lord. Oh my goodness. So to avoid this, verse 28, everyone, you, me, ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Let's talk about this unworthy real quick, okay? The word unworthy has some Christians, it has some churches a little misguided. Absolutely no shame against any church out there in the world or anybody who believes otherwise. But this is, this is what I'm, I'm going to give you all the JD version. Is that okay? Yeah. We have this thing mixed up, misguided, okay? There, we, 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 we have believed that we need to make ourselves worthy to receive communion as if there is a way that you can make yourself worthy of what Jesus did, okay? This is a serious misunderstanding because if there is anyone who truly needs to take communion, it's you and I because we are sinners. So a lot of people have painted a picture that made it seem like you had to come to Christ without sin in order to take part of this bread and this wine or this juice. And no one in this room is sinless. Every one of y'all, yes, I'm talking about you, have sinned to death. Some of y'all sinned before you got here, okay? I'm talking to myself too. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, you a sinner. Look back at that same person and say, so are you. Now that we've gotten it figured out, we are all sinners and we need Jesus' grace, amen? Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 again. So then whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, in an unworthy manner is guilty of sinning, okay? If you do it in an unworthy manner. But the thing is, this is not written with the thought of excluding ourselves. So you shouldn't hear the word unworthy because you are unworthy, oh, 100%. Of what, of what Jesus did? Oh my God. He chose me? Yeah. He chose you? Yeah, but for any of us to think that we can't take communion because we are unworthy, we need to prepare our hearts and minds to be able to receive communion. If a Christian is in sin now, hold up. If you in sin, but you're stubbornly unapologetic, you're stubbornly unrepentant, in other words, you out there doing that sin, fill in the blank, whatever that is, and you're like, I don't even care. I don't care. I ain't, I ain't apologizing for that. God, this is me. This is my life. You don't know me. I, I'm, I'm grown. I got it. If you're that, that's your heart today? Oh, yeah, you coming in, you coming in wrong, okay? But the Bible is, is asking us really to just cleanse our heart, to, 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 to do a self-reflection. We can never really make ourselves worthy of what Jesus did on the cross. I need y'all to know that, okay? And as we take the bread and as we take the cup, we should not stare at the floor Okay, I've seen this happen before. You're holding your communion element, okay? And you're, you wanna enter into this spiritual trance that will give you goosebumps, make your uh, beard stand up, amen? And, 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 oh, someone's gonna levitate, oh, and then someone's gonna get into this spiritual. If that's what you're ser searching for, you're gonna be searching for a minute, okay? Uh, by the way, goosebumps are not the presence of the Lord. Can we just... Can we, can we just, goosebumps, that, that, no, that, it's a good feeling, don't get me wrong, it's not just the presence of the Lord, y'all, the presence of the Lord is always around, and last I checked, I don't have goosebumps right now, so are you trying to tell me that the presence of the Lord ain't with me right now? <laughs> bruh, look at your neighbor say, bruh. So listen, 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 I'm almost closing. We should simply open our hearts to Jesus, okay, and we need to recognize his power, because listen up, communion, 
if you don't take anything from this, I'm closing. Communion is showing and telling everybody, everyone, that Jesus had to die so that you could live. You're preaching it, you're proclaiming it. When you take of communion, you are saying, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I remember, because there's no way you could remember when he died. You weren't there. It's remembrance as in, thank you for what you did for me, okay? So who can take communion? We've answered that. How often, okay? But why? Why do we take communion, okay? Do you have to take communion to make heaven? Nope. If you, if you never took communion your whole life, can you make heaven? Yep. Because it's not about the ritual, y'all. <laughs> it is about the relationship with Jesus. Does God love you more if you take communion? Nope. Does God love you less if you don't take communion? No. We're talking about communion here today, y'all. And for the last few weeks, when we talked about fasting, it just so happened we were during a fast. And many of you have said that you're fasting, or you can start now. Last week, we talked about prayer, and we had everybody come forward. We prayed. We didn't pray for you. You prayed. So what y'all think we're going to do today? We're going to take communion. You might say, well, uh... It's not Sunday, though. What? what? Who said that you have to take communion on Sunday? Did y'all remember the scripture when it said, whenever you do? Well, uh, that's cool, but I, took, I was here uh, Sunday, and we, we actually already took communion, so I'm good. What? When did the Bible say you could only do it once a week? Did the Bible say whenever you take? <laughs> So this is what we're gonna do. There's absolutely no pressure or obligation. I do not want you to take communion today if you don't want to. There is no shame. But this is what I do wanna do. For those of you that would like to partake in communion, I would like you to take one of these elements that the leaders are passing out. I want you to hold on to it, don't open it up just yet. I don't know how often we have taken communion in 180, but I'd like to change this. We need to be taking communion, y'all. It's one thing to talk about Jesus Christ and what he's done. It's a whole nother to show and tell. When you're taking communion, you don't take a photo of yourself taking communion and post it on social media. When you're taking communion, you don't take a photo of yourself to share it with your friends. You don't need to do all that. When you're taking communion, you don't have to be up here at the front in front of everybody so everybody can see you taking your communion element. I'm not do that neither. Jesus can see you right where you are. If you need a communion element, raise your hand if you haven't gotten one yet and they'll get to you. And leaders, please feel free to join in. Praise God. <clears throat> so if you're sitting there and you have your communion element, I would like for you to just take a moment in a serious moment, do some self-reflection right now. Is, is there something about your life that is unrepentant? Okay. This isn't to make you feel bad. This is to set you free.
do you, are you on a borrowed faith right now? Your, your parents believed in Jesus Christ. You only came because they told you to. But I, I, you know what? I want my own relationship. I'm tired of borrowing somebody else's relationship. I want my own. If that's you, we're going to give you an opportunity here in a minute. Do we have enough uh, communion cups? Thank you, brother. Does anybody else need one? Will you lift your hand if you need one? I got one. Thank you. Yeah. Listen up, everybody. Shh. I know this. This is a little bit different. If this is your first time in 180. Listen, unapologetically, I'm telling you, this is the moment you need to be in anyway. I want to walk you all through a salvation prayer. I want to make sure that our hearts and minds are in the right place. And then we're going to take communion together. Scripturally, we ain't going to just be up here doing whatever we want to do. We're going to do it as unto the Lord. Amen? Every head bowed, every eye closed in this place here today. Will you pray this prayer with me? And this is for everybody. I want everybody to pray. And don't, don't feel obligated. If you want to pray, that's fine. But this is for everyone. Say, dear Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Thank you for dying for me. I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth that you are my risen savior. You are king of kings. You are Lord of lords. I confess every sin to you. And your word promises me that what I confess, you forgive. So as of today, I stand forgiven. As of today, I stand redeemed. Let your precious blood cover me. In Jesus' name. Come on, will you guys make some noise for Jesus in this place? <laughs> wow. Tell you what, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, hey, welcome to the family of God. And maybe if you prayed that prayer for the first time in a long time, Welcome back. Praise God. But this is what we're going to do. I want everybody to stand up, please. Shh. I told you all we're going to do communion scripturally. Tanner, will you throw uh, Matthew 26 and 26 up again, please? Listen up. The Bible says, not JD, the Bible says, while they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body. I'm going to have you all open up that film on the top of your element. And what I've seen people do and what I love to do is I like to break the bread. You don't have to. It's up to you. But you can just break it with your hand. This would symbolize Jesus' body being broken for you. This is what I like to do. And remember, we don't want to take this in an unworthy manner. So can you just take a self-reflection right here? Shh. We pray to salvation prayer. We have confessed our sins to the Lord. Is your heart in the right place? Let's do this in remembrance of Jesus for no other reason but Jesus. Go ahead and partake of the bread. Oh. The Bible says in verse 27, then he took the cup, wow, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it. Not some of you, 
Not the people that read their Bible every night. Not the people who have been coming to 180 their whole life. All of you. This is my blood of the covenant. What's this new covenant all about? It is about an inner transformation. It is about a new thing that the Lord is trying to do in your life. It's about a close relationship with God. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can have this covenant relationship with Jesus. That's why we drink of the cup. And I want you guys to know before we take this, as you get older, or even 180, it's okay to be almost sorrowful during these times of communion. Why? This was the deepest, darkest time in history ever. They killed, they killed Jesus. But I like to say that they didn't kill him. He died for me. He gave his life for me. So the Bible says that this is my blood, which was poured out for many of the forgiveness of your sins. Go ahead and open up if you have not already. And let's go ahead and partake of this juice. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Listen, hold on to your cup. Don't set it down. Let me close with this. The Bible says this. Everybody give me, give me one more minute of your attention. John chapter six. Verse 53, I'm not gonna read it all. Listen, this is, this is wild, because if we take this out of context, we'll miss it. Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, what? Huh. And drink his blood, you will have no life in you. For whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up in the last day. If you read this out of context, one, you just became a cannibal and a vampire in the same night. People have this so mixed up, taking the Bible word for word, literally, literally, but what he is saying is that when you took of this bread and you took of this cup, <laughs> the Bible says, unless you eat these things and drink these things, it's very clear right there. And this is why we take communion. All right. So Father, we thank you and we love you. You are a wonderful counselor. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the everlasting Father. And today, may our hearts be in the right place to receive the perfect gift of salvation that you have given unto us. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and rose again, that we might have life and have life to the fullest. So today, I pray for every student leader and everybody watching online that you'll give them uh, hope for their future. Father, that you will continue to be with them and stand by them. And God, we just pray that your presence will always be with us. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. amen. Come on, say amen again. Amen. All right.